Hello, my name is Visor. Welcome to episode 10 of Let's Play The Witcher 2. Last episode, we did a few side quests that involved investigating the giant monster, as well as an asylum. This episode, we're going to do a few more side quests, but there's something else I want to show off first. Now, since we didn't get that rare drop in the asylum last episode, we can upgrade our Jagged Blade now, since it'll be pretty good for the rest of chapter 1. So, I threw on a Moon Rune, as well as a Fire Rune. The Moon Rune, of course, is the increase in sign damage. The Fire Rune increases damage by 5%, as well as your resistance to incineration and your chance to cause incineration. Overall, it's a pretty strong upgrade, but we managed to get an extra Fire Rune last episode, so I'm not too worried about using it now. What I am worried about is how broke we are. We really need some money, so we're going to do a few quests to solve that this episode. However, first, I want to go talk to this guy over here. He seems to have a message for Geralt from someone. Witcher Geralt, known also as the White Wolf. Am I that hard to distinguish from the locals? Tala warned me you'd be catty. Tala sent you. Indeed. I'm on business here, so he insisted I give you a message and a package. Okay. So, if you don't know who Taller is, basically he's the head of intelligence of Vizima or Temeria. And in The Witcher 1, he was in charge of the kingdom while King Foltes was not around. And currently, King Foltes is definitely not around. But who knows what politics will eventually do to Taller's position. But first, let's check out his message. What's the message? I quote him faithfully. Listen to Roach in every plowing thing, because though he's a prick, he's also a patriot. Vultures already circle Foltest's corpse, but I'll manage. Get the sons of bitches and keep your head cool. P.S. You really fucked up at the castle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did. Anyway. Give me the package. Take it. It's a weight off my mind, I tell you. Ah, uh, I wouldn't make much of an agent. All that secrecy and nerves and cursing, not my style. Good luck to you. I'm off to tend to my matters. All right, Godspeed. Oh, this message thing is the same message as before. Don't know why it shows up again. Mm. Godspeed. Give my best to Taller. Oh, I will. All right, Minute Mick, your random name. Anyway, he gave us some pretty cool stuff. Two formulas. The first one is Dancing Star, but I'm not actually sure if it's better than Grape Shot, because the Dancing Star does 10 to 40 damage, so on average 25 and has an additional 30% to cause incineration. But if you look at Grape Shot, it does on average 35 damage. That's just 10 more than the Dancing Star, ignoring the incineration damage. Is it worth it? I don't know, that seems a little iffy to me. However, if you look at the Dragon's Dream, it's even weirder. It does a lower damage, but it releases a cloud of flammable gas, which I'm pretty sure you're supposed to set off with Igni. Does this work out better? Is it a better way of dealing with things? I'm not really sure. I don't actually remember making too many of these. Oh, finally, we also got a book on Arrakis, which of course we're going to read because it's a monster and the knowledge will help whenever we need to eventually kill one. You notice it's night, so one of the best things we can do to get money right now is talk to King Ziggy. So let's talk to him. Something Who does King Ziggy behold? Given any thought to my proposal. Yeah, let's do it. We can ask him to fill us in, but he won't tell us anything. That bastard. I'm ready. I'll explain on the way. Let's uh, spit it out. Now what flocks and famous for? Nothing. You're wrong there. There are only two towns worth visiting in the Pontar Valley. Bondar, famous for having the most beautiful hordes in the north, and Flotsam. For having the best fist fight in scene. Who organizes these fights? Officially, no one. But look hard and you'll be surprised what you can find. It's a vibrant scene with winners and losers of all kinds. I promote fighters, place them in tournaments, singled you out and venture to say you'll not regret that. Now, let's go where boys become men and brawlers become champions. The place reeks of blood, but come out standing and you'll sense the sweet smell of orange. Well, okay, so we're going to be doing a fight club, basically. Oh, also, one last thing. His haircut, I changed it to uh, just let it out. Another hairstyle that maybe people are interested in seeing. And let's see what we're doing at Loritos. Halt! 
Don't recognise King Ziggy? I know you. But who's the other one? He looks dangerous. Like all of King Ziggy's fighters. Well, that fireman you brought in last time was carried out all broken in no time. This one will be different. You'll see. The Commandant himself will bet a fortune on him. All right. But if I'm to let him in, he has to leave all his weapons here. Yeah, sure. Why not? We've already done this before. Fine. You're a rich man already. The weapons will be waiting in the trunk outside the gate. All right. Laredo. In the flesh. Does he condone these fights? Condone? He sets them up. A lot of coin at stake here. I haven't been too lucky lately, but I believe you'll change that. People will remember King Ziggy. Just don't disappoint me. Okay, let's keep going. Luckily, this guy's waiting for me to loot all of Laredo's stuff. So, we're back here again. Remember, we ran through here earlier, sticking around the guards to... That's weird. Why did I want a load sequence for that? Anyway, normally that doesn't happen. But here we are again. This is a path we didn't explore last time because we had no reason to go here. Finish the fucker off! Ziggy the Clown returns. And in grand fashion. I've got a contender who's about to be famous. The Monster Slayer? How'd you talk him into fighting? King Ziggy has his ways. All in all looks promising. We're about to make Flotsam famous for its mug fights. They'll sing songs about Ziggy and Geralt. You just win and I'll take care of the rest. Ready? You know, this guy totally reminds me of Don King. I mean, King Ziggy, Don King, plus the crazy hair and the random bullshit promises. Anyway, let's do it. Yeah, I'm ready. Grand. I'll hear you say my name with reverence yet. Twigs will be your first opponent. So cool because bones snap with his every punch. I love these pussies with cocky names. Stand your ground! Actually, if you think about it, that nickname makes no sense. I mean, if he's Twigs, he's what snaps with every single punch. Regardless, these guys are actually pretty decent fighters, Finish and this will go on for a while, off. so let's speed it up a little. All right, we're doing Twigs. Beautiful job rearranging his face. Who's next? One Punch Matho. Name says it all. Downs most opponents with his first punch. All right. I'll see if I can't make him throw a second. Good luck. Sock it to him! You know, Geralt, making him two-punch math house, not really an improvement. But anyway, same deal as before. All right, there goes math house. You're the discovery of my lifetime. Think we're made for each other? Ew. Indeed, but we've a long way to go. Your next opponent is Smugface, also known as Tassel Dick. Not too popular, then. He has tassels on his clothes. Last month, he bit his opponent's ear off. Honestly, both nicknames are amazing. Smugface and Tasseldick. I mean, these are obviously the best names since, I guess, uh, Flip R's. Bring on this Tasseldick. Stand your ground! Oh, plus, since the guy bit somebody's ear off, clearly this is supposed to be like Tyson and, you know, Don King. A little disappointed by the lack of tassels, though. One more and we'll be rich and famous. Who is it? Stanek. In a rumble, it takes at least four lads to take him down. Yeah, his nickname's not as cool. Well, see what happens. I'll do it single-handed. Don't underestimate him. Witcher, come here a minute. It's impressive technique. Thanks. Last fight's coming up, and everyone's betting on the dead cert. You. Except for me. What do you want, Lurido? Stenek has to win, but the true winners will be you and me. A third of the jackpot's yours, and that's not an offer. Yeah, we could accept it, or we can say fuck you. We can also accept it and fuck him anyway. We got a lot of options. I see. You're a regular con. 
Your opinions don't interest me. You ought to take a dive. That's that. Piss off, old man. So, Lurido shows his true colors. He's not as proper as he seemed during their meeting, which is kind of obvious. His real goal is just to Stand make as ground. much money as possible, which we'll show off in this episode. Anyway, this is Stenic, and he's kind of weird looking. Really feels kind of bad because I'm obviously beating up an elder, but he looks Suck like a skinny ass him. monk. I don't know why he's the big fighter. He's taking a lot of hits though, so I guess he must be good at something. God, that's brutal. Suck it to Pay it. up. Here's your coin. The guards will take you to the gate. You'll regret this. I told you we'd win. I've got a real sense for these things. I think you owe me something. Why don't we have some fun first? A free round at every inn, not to mention the girls. You can screw my share. Now, I'm not 100% sure what that last little bit meant. You can screw my share. But I suspect King Ziggy was proposing to take Geralt to all the towns and keep promoting him. And Geralt was saying, fuck him, I don't need it. At least that's how I understood it. Or maybe Geralt was saying King Ziggy can fuck the whores. Either way, we gained 200 orins, so we're doing better financially. Oh, also, I kind of sold most of our snares. We had like 31 of them and I sold 19. Because one, I needed the money. And two, I don't think I need to keep that many snares around. Yeah, I know I use a bunch of them to kill the Indriga Queens, but it's a little cheesy, and I don't want to keep doing that for the rest of the game. Anyway, let's go back to town. After all, Lorito did just threaten us, so let's see what that threat was all about. And it's probably these two fine folks over here. There we go. And luckily, none of the guards are pissed off that we have our sword out here. And with our new sword, these guys died pretty quickly. Let's see if they have any loot. Ooh, they had some nice stuff on them. Well... They had some stuff on them. That's all that matters. Anyway, now that this is done, we could go back to town, but there's something else we can do here as well. Now, remember the quest with Melina? She was the elf girl surrounded by guards in Lobodin. We're pretty close to that cave they were talking about, so let's just walk over there and check it out. While we're taking that short walk, though, I want to talk about the Lawson's fight club thing garrison. again. So if we chose to throw that fight, we would actually still get 200 gold, but then Dandelion, who bet on you, would be screwed over. Plus, we wouldn't get to fight those last two guys for more EXP. Anyway, we'll here we are. Here. Make it quick. Okay, so we're going in the cave. But first... We have a sign of strength. This increases our sword damage. And we have some blood. A lot of blood. And I'm about to find out who it belonged to. Yep. So, let's get in there. So, what do you think we're going to be fighting in this cave? What type of possible enemies there might there be? Well, let me give you a hint. I have my silver sword out for a reason. Now, I know last episode we fought a pretty large crowd of Neckers. This episode, it gets a little bit worse than that. This is a whole fucking cave full of them. And there's a bunch of warriors. However, we're about to level up, so that's pretty cool. Come on! Jesus, that's a lot of them. By the way, I made about seven new uh, grape shots because I figured we needed them. Ow. Maybe I should have taken some potions because uh, my health is getting kind of down there and there's still a lot of them. Now, we did get healed by the level up, but I'm just going to spam grape shots because there's still quite a few of them. Ah, actually just one of them left. That's a lot more manageable. It looks like there's a dead body here. I don't think he has anything too interesting, though. He does have a bastard sword, but it's not as good as our jagged blade. Anyway, let's keep going deeper in the cave, because there's still more of these little fuckers. So, we took care of the brunt of them, so this isn't too bad. Actually, here's something. Yeah, there's another one. What? Did a backflip, that's kind of cool. Anyway, let's go keep going deeper in the cave. Just like looting, sometimes you can't climb because you're still in combat. Anyway, as soon as I get somewhere clear, I'll actually level up. Because right now, this place is just crawling with these bastards. 
Now, there's more blood on the ground. We could examine it, but it's just going to say, oh, look, blood. It's a little bit unnecessary. Additionally, all over this cave, you'll notice there's bags of iron. Because this is a mine, so we're going to loot all of that later as well. Anyway, here's our goal. This ledge right here. Assuming we can climb it. Now look, two dead soldiers full of arrows in their backs. And I don't think Neckers can shoot arrows. Scoia'tael arrows. This is pretty clear. Yeah, I guess that's fairly clear. Obviously it was a trap. But does that make it Melina's fault? But anyway, if we continue through the cave, it's going to end up in a dead end. Well, it's going to end up in a door that we can't open. So instead, we'll backtrack and loot the caves. All right, so we're finally out of the caves, and we looted pretty much everything. Oh, by the way, you might have noticed that there's that circle sound when you get close to it. But since we already took the circle when we went in, it's going to take a while before it regenerates here. We might be able to get it in a few hours if we needed to. But anyway, let's go talk to the group. Find anything in there? Two soldiers. What happened to them? So, we could tell them the truth, that they were shot by elves. And they'll probably question the elf girl, and it might get really messy. Or we can lie to them, tell them monsters did it, and try to solve this problem ourselves. After all, we are Geralt, and we're pretty badass, and we can probably handle it, right? So let's go with that. They're dead. Half eaten, too. You sure? Their bodies are shredded like mincemeat. Uh, any idea what happened? Seems something lured your patrol to the cave. Unfortunately, the soldiers weren't prepared for what they found and paid for that. Just like you can pay me now. Sure, sure. You've earned it. You saved me, Witcher. Humans don't usually side with elves. I'm not your ordinary human. That's true. Any chance I could learn just how unusual you are? What do you have in mind? You'll see. You'll find me in the forest by the waterfall. Just remember, I won't wait forever. The forest is dangerous. You can't go alone. We elves have our paths. Don't worry about me. Mm hmm. So, she's proposing that we meet her alone in the forest next to the waterfall. Granted, we've been to the waterfall many times before, but it still seems a little suspicious, doesn't it? It's not exactly a romantic location, considering all the monsters nearby. Still, we can head out there as soon as I drop off all my loot. Alright, there she is by the waterfall. But before we get to her, I forgot to level up, so we might as well do that now. After all, this area is fairly safe now, since we just killed everything in this area. So, we got another new talent. And I want to keep on working on our magic. Now, putting a second point to this would actually be pretty good. We would gain another 5 sign damage and gain a vigor. However, our goal right now isn't just to pick good abilities. Our goal right now is to make it all the way down the magic tree so we can get an adrenaline bar. Which will unlock a new interesting ability. But to get there, we really only have one choice. We have to take Enhance Quinn. Which will allow Quinn to deflect damage and increase its duration. Okay, so that's done. Oh, there's also one other thing I wanna talk about. You might notice at the top of the screen, I have two icons for the sharpening stone buff on the sword. It was a temporary sword enhancement, but I didn't stack two of it on the same sword. Instead, I used one on each of my swords because the force is full of monsters and Scoia'tael. Anyway, let's check out Melina. Maybe she has something important to say. I'm glad you came. Me too. But you see, there is one problem. Let me hear it. I really did lure those two guards into a trap. I know. I found the arrows. Exactly. You know too much. And only corpses keep their secrets. So, yeah. We're actually getting attacked by drowners here, as well as elves, which is awesome. It's awesome because they'll fight each other. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, let me prepare what I want to do. Well, we did just improve Quinn. Might as well try it out. So, let's start murdering these guys. Okay, there goes Quinn. So, yeah, it still only blocks a few hits, but it did set off and cause some damage to that guy. Could also use this opportunity while they're distracted to use Axie. 
But I guess they were already fighting each other, so maybe it's not a big deal. Actually, I think they killed all the drowners, so it's a one on five now. That's great. Well, one on five as soon as the Axie wears off. Oh, nope, the guy who was controlling died. Still, that's pretty good. It's one of four. So I still don't want to fight all of them. They're just kind of hard to deal with. Might just set them all on fire. Oof, getting really low. But I think we can kite them for a bit. Just keep on doing our Igni thing. He's parrying bastards. Come on. One guy left. We can probably take him on in one-on-one, -on -one, right? Maybe not. Ah, stop blocking me. Damn, bastard. So you're, we'll just burn him to death. We got the vigor to do it. All right. So we're going to loot all these bodies. Then we're going to go look for Melina, who's actually escaped to somewhere we were last episode. The old asylum. All right, here we are, back at the asylum. Now, Melina's not actually marked on the map, but she should just be right over here. Oh, no, no. Actually, past her. She's right over here. So let's just talk or stab her. If only. No, instead, we need to talk to her, assuming the game lets me. What's going on here? Die. Oh, Indra Guz. Okay, let's murder this thing, then talk to Melina. Okay. So let's see what she's got to say for herself. Mercy. Mercy, eh? Well, we'll see. Anyway, you have a few options here, but you definitely don't want Lorito involved. One, Lorito's a racist and an asshole. And two, you don't get any rewards for doing this. So you can either stab the fuck out of her, which is justified, or you can tell her just go away. Maybe she can help you down the line. Either way, the reward is the same, so I don't really feel like murdering somebody who's inherently powerless against me is the right choice. So, we'll be merciful this time. Away with you. Don't let me see you again. Thanks. You won't. Alright, so that's done. Now, we can start working on the troll quest. Remember troll trouble? Something wrong with the bridge and all that? It's fairly close by, so we'll go do that. All right, so we're almost at the bridge, but before we quite get there, we notice something's going wrong. So let's one-shot these guys with some Igni. Thank you, master. Drives me mad. This cursed wood is full of scum, and that horse has lost his mind. Who might that be? The troll! For years, he's been collecting tolls at the bridge, for which he's to keep the bridge tidy and drive away the scum. What's the problem, then? Merchants from the port sent me to find out the what and why, seeing as this is the only path out to the port inland. But I found the bridge in ruins, and that cheeky cocksucker asked for liquor to let me pass. Across that pile of rubble, I says, and he smacks me so hard I see stars. Laredo's put a price on his head. If Laredo had his way, he'd cut us off from the world, that son of a bitch. We need a bridge, but a working one. And we need a troll, but a sober one. If you're looking to make some coin, hold off on killing the troll and see the village chief instead. He'll tell you all you need to know. Yeah, I guess we could do that. Or we could just go down there and murder the troll. That would save us a lot of walking. But I guess it's a witcher thing to kill pests and evil things. And a drunk troll isn't inherently evil, so let's go hear him out. So now we're in the chief of Lobodin's house, watching him sleep? Let's wake him up. Any work for a witcher? Enough work for three, but what of it? We're poor folk. I'm sure we can work something out. Ye best go to Flotsam Town Square near the inn. There are notices on the board there. Just leave the troll be, please, no matter what the townsfolk say. Uh-huh. Well, let's see why. I heard you don't want to get rid of the troll. Who'll maintain the bridge when he's gone? Hire some people. Know the cost of a craftsman these days? 
That idiot troll looks after the bridge for petty tolls, more or less. The bridge is in ruins and the troll's robbing people. Aye, it's because he's hit the bottle. If you could help him stop boozing. I'm a witcher, not a nanny. I'll pay you well. How much? A hundred orens. Two hundred. You're costly, but what the hell? Let them see I place the village's welfare above all else. That's pretty noble of him. Okay. Let's go do that. Because, I mean, killing the troll would only net us... Well, supposedly it only supposed to net us 50 orens, but I think it actually gets us 100. Take care of yourself. So, let's go back to the troll and see what we can do. All right, here we are, back at the bridge. We just need to find the troll and hopefully we can come to an agreement. All right, there he is. No. No what? No passage. Give vodka you passage. Mm-hmm. Well, why would I do that? Why should I pay you? My bridge? This is a pile of rubble, not a bridge. You're getting nothing from me. Ah, from me? You get in mug. All right, so we're fighting a troll. Negotiations have broken down, so let's see what we can do. Oh, God. Did not have the sword out for that. That was bad. I took a lot more damage than I should have. Oh, he's charging again. Nice. There we go. Enough! Don't hit! I'd be good. Mm-hmm. Well, we could say that wasn't good enough and keep killing him. Or we can ask him why he's getting drunk. He's got to have a reason, right? You're drunk. Vodka good? Head hurt, I. But no pain in brain. Brain pain always comes with a reason. They kill my woman. She good. She cooked meat. Who killed her? Don't know. Me sit on bridge. Go home. No meat smell. Woman dead. Had no head. Guts to drink. In can't go. People that kill. But guts to drink. Well, let's see. If we get the murderers, that should probably help out, right? At least a little bit. If I find your woman's murderers, will you put aside the booze? You no find none. We'll see. I've got friends here. I'll talk to them. All right, there's quite a few people we can talk to. Zoltan knows a few things about hunting trolls. Sheila knows about the magical properties of troll parts. But if we're dealing with a troll head, I think we remember seeing a troll head somewhere, don't we? Maybe on a guy who was really into taxidermy and dice? All right, there's that troll head. Now we're in Sendler's house, watching him sleep. Well, let's ask him the obvious question. Where do you get that head? I bought it. Cost me a fortune, but it was worth it. No one else in Lobinden's got a troll's head. Who'd you buy it from? Dimitri. Who else would dare trap a troll in its very own den? Where can I find this Dimitri? That I don't know, but you'll find his mates carousing at the inn in the evening. That's interesting. But let's try to get the head as well. I'd like to buy that head from you. No way! The head's mine, you smelly swine. I'll give you a good price, unless you'd prefer to trade. Hmm. We could roll some dice for it, provided you make it worth my while. Thanks. That was helpful. Seriously? He's not going to accept a payment and said wants us to play dice? We've kicked his ass before. We can do it again. Though probably not as luckily as last time. All right. So we got the troll head. You're good. Here's your coin. I want the she-troll's head. Beautiful. So we got the troll head. Now, not only did we get the troll head, we also got a troll tongue. And this is important because, remember that amulet quest? The four things we needed for the ritual were Essence of Death, which we got from a wraith, Indriga Fetus, which we got from the Indriga contract, and a troll tongue, which we just got. The final thing, an arachnus eye, we don't have available yet. Though we could buy it from Cedric for like 500 orins. But I'm not doing that because I barely have 500 orins right now. Instead, let's go to the inn and talk to Dimitri's man. 
All right, so we're in the bottom floor of the inn, and the guy we're looking for should be right here. Do you work for Dimitri? Who's asking? Because you see, friend, I'm starting to find this a mite confusing. You here at the bidding of that old rag, the Fist Tech Boys or Laredo. And be straight with me. I heard you hunted down a troll. None of your plowing business. Ah, this guy's being really aggressive. Luckily, we can also be really aggressive. We already maxed out our intimidation. Heard of the Butcher of Blaviken? Who hasn't? You say you can gut a man with a single cup? Yeah, I can. And if you don't tell me where I can find Dimitri, I'll splash your guts on the walls. Steady. Start talking. Dimitri hangs around the cemetery near that stinking village. See? You can be nice. All you need to do is try. Okay, so we're gonna go visit a cemetery. We actually passed it a bunch of times when we were exploring the forest. We just had no reason to go there, so let's go there now. All right, here we are at the cemetery, and it has started raining. Now, before we go to Dimitri, I want to talk about the rain. Basically, when it's raining, your electrical attacks do more damage. But you really only have one electrical attack, which is Quinn. Luckily, we got a level in it, so it actually does damage now. Anyway, let's go see Dimitri. Which is not this way. Whoops. I need to take this path up. And up here should be Dimitri and all his henchmen. Luido will know that's no squirrel, but an ordinary elf. He won't know shit. Ears pointy, check. We'll dress the corpse in green and collect an even hundred. Heard Milena makes more than that. I guess robbing the soldier is better business than robbing elves. I'll not hear of that whore again, got it? Treacherous rag. She'll get what she deserves. Won't be long now. Couldn't satisfy her, eh? Can't fault the girl for being ambitious. And the stiff on the ground is who? Some spy from Vizima, soon to be our squirrel's grave mate. Laredo told me to get rid of him, and since we've got this vacancy in the boneyard, thought I might do our friend a small favour. He don't look like no spy. They never do once they're dead. Oh, almost forgot. Might pay to search him good and thorough before we plant him in the dirt. You, Dimitri? Why the fuck do you want to know? The troll sends his regards. Kill him! No witnesses! All right, so it's another fight. And we got a little bit of Quinn going. But other than that, it's kind of a tough fight. There's four guys up here, and they're kind of a hassle. Let's try to even it out a little bit with a little axie. All right, let's dodge it and circle around back so we can stab him a bunch. There we go. We can probably take out this one guy real quick. Oh, all surrounded, though. Move. Actually, we might be able to control Dimitri. Oh, that should make it a lot easier. He's way tougher than the other two. I think he can kill the other guy in a one-on-one -on -one pretty easily. Beautiful. Uh-oh, he came back. Turn around. Do not look at me. This is actually a little too easy. Anyway, let's walk around and flank the other guy. Oh, never mind, he's already dead. Let's stab Dimitri in the asshole. Enemy strikes back. We can always just use Axie again. Like, ow, he's throwing shit. All right, let's just control him again. Get behind him and two nice swings should do it. Boom, nice and simple. So let's see what he got on him. All right, so he has a key, which is interesting. The sword's kind of mediocre, but the letter's very interesting. Basically, Luis Marseille is the guy in charge of the money in this town. He's the guy that paid you to kill the Neckers, the Indragas. He's also one that told you to kill the Karen. Now, he's obviously working with Dimitri and Laredo on something. I mean, at least we know Dimitri is doing all their dirty work, and they've given him safe passage around the city. Now, let's look at this other letter. This is a letter for Taller. Taller, of course, was the guy who gave you the message and package in the beginning of this episode. And he's the head of security at Vizima slash Tamarian. Anyway, let's see what this letter's about. So, from this letter, you learn a few things. It looks like Laredo has brought over the remnants of Salamandra, 
which was something from last episode that was making fist tech. In fact, we might have met one of them, aka McShady Pugs. He was probably brought in to make fist tech for Lurito, because Lurito, for some reason, wants to make a lot of money to do something. This guy didn't know what he was doing, but he thinks it's high treason. That's a big deal. Anyway, it also turns out this guy is not a real spy. Not sure why Taller's sending a non-spy to do this job, but I think last game he had some pretty incompetent subordinates anyway. But let's handle the matter at hand. The troll should be happy now. We not only got the wife's head, we also killed the murderers. Though I do want to note how in that opening cutscene, Melina was mentioned. You know, the elf chick that betrayed us. Apparently, I guess she and Dimitri might have worked together. Maybe they hooked up before. But eventually she got too ambitious and betrayed him. I can see that happening. She seems the type that'll sacrifice anyone and everyone. But anyway, back to the troll. Alright, here we are again. The troll's asleep, but he should be pretty happy to see us, right? Give vodka, dwarf. You drink too much. Your eyesight's shit. Why, Buck? Actually, no. I want to do something else first. This is kind of funny. Just tell him I'm not even here. You're imagining things, troll. There's no one here. And he just accepts it. <laughs> I think it's pretty funny anyway. Now, for real? Give vodka, dwarf. You drink too much. Your eyesight's shit. Why, Buck? Okay, so we can still kill him if we want to. Or we can give him the head of his wife. So, that should be good. I found your wife's head. My woman, I not forget. I give reward, but drink well till you give me Killman's head. Okay, now this thing is really cool. But first, I want to note that we still have the troll tongue. We gave the head back, but we kept the tongue for ourselves, which is useful. Anyway, this armor, or the hunter armor, is really awesome. Not only does it have a really high armor rating, it also gives a lot of resistance to poisoning, bleeding, all that good stuff. Finally, it also has three enchantment slots, so we can really deck it out if we want to. Additionally, the material to make it are all really common, so we'll probably do that off camera for next episode. Anyway, let's give him back the kill man's head. Kill sort of. Vodka, dwarf. You drink too much. What? I punished your wife's murderers. Mine? You'll find what's left of them at the cemetery. I find. Will you fix the bridge? Trolls true. Make sure your hands are steady when you do it. No drink more. Head in peace. All right, so uh, we can go back to the village elder and get a reward. But first, there's something else I want to do. Remember when we killed Dimitri, we got a key. We're going to go raid his secret hideout. All right, here's Dimitri's hideout. There were actually quite a few bandit guards, but we killed all of them already. Since we have the key, we can unlock this door. And it looks like they were making wine or something here. I don't think it was fist tech. Anyway, we got some loot here. Most of it's just random, normal loot. But there are a few special things, like a uh, sun rune, which should be in this chest, and quite a bit of orin. Overall, I'm just showing this place off for completionist's sake. Anyway, let's go head back to the Elder and get our reward. Alright, we're back in the Elder's house, and it looks like he's still sleeping. Whatever, let's wake him up. You owe me 200 orins. You'll get 100. I don't think he knows who he's dealing with. But let's see. Let's go through our options. We could intimidate, which we are pretty good at. Or we can try Persuasion. We do need to max that out since I think we're only at level 2 right now. So, let's go for that. Listen, I made deals with you and the troll. He kept his word. You're trying not to. I haven't the coin. Sure you don't want to look a little harder? What if I don't find any? Then I'll look myself. This is robbery. Here, I hope you choke on it. I don't know. Sure seems like he had the coin to me. Now, it might feel like we're taking advantage of this village, but not really. If we really want to take advantage of this village, we have one more option left. 
we can still go out there and kill the troll. Then take his head and give it to Luis Marseille, and he'll give us another 100 Orin. Definitely an option. Some benefits of this, besides the 100 Orin, would be we get a bunch of troll parts. Some troll trophy, troll skin, another troll tongue. So, do you guys think we should do that? It would benefit us, and we really don't like this town that much anyway. If this decision is too appalling to you, you can also do another one. Remember our haircut thing that I've been showing off? Well, I've showed off all of them, so you guys might as well decide what we should wear for the rest of the game. Whatever gets the biggest response, I'll do. Next episode. But until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time.